very good to be back with you. And this time I'd like to talk to you about music and musical scales. I do a lot of work with using music and musical instruments to teach technical subject to students. And one of the questions that comes up is keys and scales. Like, Where do those come from? You'll hear somebody say, well, I'm playing in the, the key of C or the key of G minor or something like that. Well, what does that mean? It turns out that music is built on patterns, and in that sense it's very much like mathematics, because mathematics is really just a study of patterns. Okay? And the patterns music are built from are intervals between notes. Now, the smallest possible interval between two notes is called either a half step, a half tone, or a semitone, depending on who you talk to. I'm going to call it a half step. Two half steps is, guess what, a full step. Now, if you want to know what a half step is, look at the keyboard on a piano. When you go from one note to the note right next to it, that's a half step. So if you go from a white key to the black key right next to it, that's a half step. And there's a ratio of those two frequencies, and that ratio is the twelfth root of two. If you want to know where that comes from, I've got a, a video posted on that too. On a guitar, where's my guitar? It's also easy to see. Here, I'll hold it the right way. Um, when I play a note, I may grab a note right there, right? and there's a fret right there, so I stop the string right there, and I'm making a certain frequency. If I go up one fret and make the next note up the, up the neck, that uh, difference from that fret to that fret is a half step. So every fret on a guitar represents an interval of, ha of a half step. Okay? Now, the way the notes are named, where they're named with letters, they could have been named anything. We could have called them Bob and George and Mary if we wanted to. But for whatever reason, they're called uh, by letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And there's some modifiers. That little checkerboard looking thing is a sharp symbol. When you, raise, when you put that sharp sign there, you raise a note by half a step. So C to C sharp, that's a half step. C sharp to D, that's a half step. D to D sharp, half step, and so on. Okay, this little uh, italic B looking thing is a flat symbol. And flat is just to lower the note by half step. So D flat is a half step below C. E flat is a half step below D. Okay? And the way I've got it written, the pitches, the frequencies are increasing as we go down. Now I've started with C here and written the pattern out to C again. Now the pattern repeats itself, and I could have started with any note. Um, for reasons I'll, you'll see here in a second, I wanted to start with C for this demo. One last thing to note is there's, there's no note in between E and F or between B and C. These are a half step apart, and these are a half step apart, whereas all the other what are called natural notes that don't have a sharp or a flat on them, those are all a whole step apart. So C go C, C sharp, D. Well, that's two half steps. That's a whole step. D, D sharp, E. That's a whole, whole step made of two half steps. But the way you see this is go look on a piano. Notice on a piano there's, there'll be white key, black key, white key, black key, and then all of a sudden there'll be no black key. There'll be two white keys right next to each other. Well, that's either E and F or B and C, depending on which one you're looking at. So a piano keyboard has this laid right out in front of you. All right? Now, the C sharp and D flat, I've gotten written, them written next to each other, the same here and here and here and here. Those are nominally, anyway, the same note. Now, they're not exactly the same note, depending on a few things. It turns out there's more than one way to define the frequencies in a musical scale. And if you use the, the way that's used for guitars and all stringed instruments, that's something called equal tempering. And these really are exactly the same note. If you use some other kind of tempering, these might be a little different. But in modern music, at least when you're dealing with any kind of fretted stringed instrument like I do, it's always equal temper. So for the time being, just assume these things are identical. Even if they're not exactly, they're pretty close. Um, and the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to show you how to make a scale or a key based on a pattern. Well, the most common key or scale is a major scale. Okay? And people say, well, I'm playing in, this, in the key of C major or G major. Well, what that means is they, they've picked a certain collection of notes from the possible notes. Now, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 possible notes. But when I go all the way through this, this uh, list and it starts to repeat itself, that's called an octave. Well, octave suggests eight, doesn't it? An octopus has eight legs, an oct octagon has eight sides. So an octave means there must be eight notes, but there's 12 possible ones. Well, all a scale is is a collection of eight notes picked from the 12 possible notes. And they're picked out using a pattern, kind of a recipe. So for a major scale, the recipe goes one, one, one half, 
one, 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 one half. So I start what's called the root note, and any of these notes could be a root note. I'm going to start with C and go one step, one half step, one, 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 one half, and then the notes that I land on, those are going to be the notes that I use to make the scale. So let's start with C, go one, one, one half, one, 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 one half. And now you can see why everybody likes this, the key of C major. There's only natural notes. There's no sharps or flats. So a C major scale is C, D, E, F, G, A, D. It goes back to C again. So this is nice. For a lot of instruments, if you, if you, you start out learning to play, learning to read music, you start out the C major scale because there's no sharps or flats anywhere. This would be like learning to play the piano, only playing a piano that didn't have any black keys. This is playing only on the white keys, which if you're a self-taught pianist, maybe that's a good thing. So there's, there are other kinds of scales. There are several others, and they have some fairly obscure names. They go by names like Mixolydian and Lydian and Locrian and Aeolian and all these, these very ancient names. Probably the second most popular scale is a minor scale. I'll tell you about that one. You can go look the other ones up. So there's a minor scale, all right, and it's defined by a pattern of eight notes, and it just happens to be a different pattern. I don't use a lot, so I've got it written over here. One, one half, one, one, one half, one, one. Okay, that's a minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth one. Okay, good. We've got eight notes there. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write out the minor scale. I'm going to take C minor. And I'm going to show you how to, how to define the notes, but I'm going to show you also why you might want to use flats instead of sharps, okay? So let's start out with one, one half, one, one, one half, one, one. And you know you got it right if you want to end up on the same note you started with. So what this is going to work out to be, I'm going to double check here. I've got D flat, G flat, and A flat, or G, D sharp, G sharp, and A sharp. D sharp, G sharp, A sharp. Okay, good. I got it right. So that's going to be C. I'm going to write that out as a minor now. So that's going to go C, D sharp. And all I'm doing is just reading off the, I'm sorry, D and then D sharp. Reading off the notes here. C, D, D sharp, F, G. G sharp, A sharp, oh boy, I don't have enough room here, and C. Can you see that over there? I think you can. Okay. So C, D, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, A sharp, and C. There's one problem here. The way that the, the key signature is written out on the staff, you can't have a D and a D sharp both. It doesn't work because you're going you're gonna to put a, a sharp note on that staff well, you're not going to be able to distinguish between those two. Well, that's a problem. You can't actually write that key out in musical notation. Huh. So what do you do? Well, you can't. You don't change the scale. That's certainly a valid scale. What you do is you write it in terms of flats. So let's do the same thing. Let's write it over here. Let's see. I'm going to do this A flat and B flat and C. Okay, that's going to work out. Now, to write this out, C, D, that's okay, but now instead of D sharp, I'll use E flat. Okay, E flat, F, G. Now, G sharp is A flat, and C, A sharp is B flat, and C. The rule is that no note, can, no, no uh, letter can appear more than once in, this, in the sequence. D appears more than once and G appears more than once. That's, that's breaking the rule. But now I've got C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Perfect. And now I've just got some flats in there. Okay? So if you write out the, the key of C minor, that's what it looks like. Right? So math and music, very much related. They're both all about patterns. And when a musician says they're talking about a major or a minor scale or one of the other scales, they're make, using a scale made out of notes, picked out of all the possible of 12 in an octave. They're using eight of them, and they're picked out according to a very simple and very specific pattern.
Hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.